Hello and welcome to today's video on the anterior and medial thigh. One of our first tasks in lab is going to be to skin our anatomical donor. And so one of the first structures that we're going to see is going to be located right about here, which is called the saphenous opening. The saphenous opening is a naturally occurring opening in the fascia lata, and it is important because we have the long or great saphenous vein that is traveling up the thigh here and the great saphenous vein disappears through the saphenous opening to then join the femoral vein. The great saphenous vein specifically is really interesting for us because it can actually be used for several applications. It can, for instance, be used for a saphenous venous graft, which they use in a so-called cabbage procedure, which would be the coronary artery bypass graft. One thing that needs to be taken into account here though, as with all of the veins of the lower limb, these veins have valves. So the valves either have to be stripped out or the vein has to be inserted in an orientation as to not obstruct the blood flow through the newly formed coronary artery. So if I now go ahead and zoom out a little bit and add in everything that we need to see from the lower limb, including the leg and the foot, we can actually see that the great saphenous vein indeed is great. And according to dissector, the, the word saphenous means manifest or obvious. So the great saphenous vein, as we can see down here, actually arises on the medial aspect of your foot. And it actually constitutes the end of the dorsal venous arch of the foot, which we are going to encounter in a later lab. So it'll then start its trip up the leg. At the knee, it's going to pass over the posterior border of the medial epicondyle of the femur. And then it'll continue on its course anterolaterally to eventually lie on the anterior surface of the thigh. And then, as previously discussed, it will dive into the saphenous opening. And now we can actually already appreciate a couple of additional structures that are in the direct proximity of this interesting area. We can also see that in the limbs, as with most of the rest of the body, our superficial and deep lymphatic vessels are going to be accompanying superficial and deep veins, respectively. Highlighted right here for us is one of the groups of lymph nodes of the lower limb, which would be the vertical or the lower group of superficial inguinal lymph nodes. And where there's a vertical group, there's also a horizontal group, which would be up here, which is also referred to as the upper group of superficial inguinal lymph nodes. I'm going to go ahead and hide the fascia lata now because we are done with all of our superficial fascia of the thigh and the leg. And now we can have a look at this region here. We can already appreciate that it somehow looks like a triangle, doesn't it? So this is the reason why it's called the femoral triangle. Our superior boundary right here is going to be the inguinal ligament. The lateral boundary is going to be this muscle, which is not only the longest muscle in our thigh or actually in our body called the sartorius but it also crosses two joints, as we're going to see in a moment. And then it is immediately bounded by this muscle, which is going to be called the adductor longus. Within the femoral triangle, we're going to find the femoral nerve, which is the nerve of the anterior compartment of the thigh, and of course, all of its branches. We're also going to find the femoral artery and the femoral vein. And then there would be an empty space and some lymphatics, as we can indicate here. While we're in this region, let's also pay attention to this structure here, which is the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, also known as the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. This is an interesting nerve. It is a sensory nerve to the lateral thigh, and on its way, it actually travels deep to the inguinal ligament, as we can see right here. This nerve comes from L2 and L3. We have an additional nerve that we should definitely be aware of, which is called the saphenous nerve. As the name indicates, this nerve will be traveling together with the saphenous vein for at least part of its course. So to find this nerve, we should actually track the saphenous vein, or actually the great saphenous vein. This is where it pierces the deep fascia of the medial aspect of the knee. The saphenous nerve is just a branch of the femoral nerve. It's a cutaneous branch, and it will innervate some of the skin on the anterior and medial aspects of the leg, and then further down on the foot as well. So now let's move over to the anterior compartment of the thigh. This is the place where muscles are housed that cause flexion of the hip and thigh, and also extension of the knee and 
leg that depends on if these muscles actually cross one or two joints because we have a few that actually cross two joints. All of the muscles of the anterior compartment except for one exception are innervated by the femoral nerve which comes from L2 through L4. So now let's take a look at the muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh first before we move on. Here is the sartorius muscle as I've previously mentioned. This is actually the longest muscle in our body. And you can see that it extends all the way from the anterior superior iliac spine all the way down here to the medial aspect of the knee. And this is actually interesting because the sartorius is one of the muscles that forms the structure which is called the pes anserinus, which means the goose's foot. And a mnemonic for that is sergeant fought, S-G-T-F-O-T, which stands for the three muscles and the three respective nerves that form this structure. Let me go ahead and hide this sartorius for now, and then let's see what we can find deep to it. So deep to the sartorius here, we can actually find the rectus femoris, which is part of the quadriceps femoris. And it also crosses two joints. This is why it's capable of eliciting two actions. So it can flex the thigh, but it can also extend the knee. So it's a, an important muscle to kick for instance, to kick a soccer ball. Let's go ahead and hide that one too and see what else we have here. So I said it's a quadriceps femoris muscle, so we should actually have four heads in total. The rectus was one of them. So then we have three vasti. We have one on the side here called the vastus lateralis. Deep to that is the vastus intermedius. And then most medially, this all makes a lot of sense, the vastus medialis. The tendons of these four muscles all distally unite to form the strong quadriceps tendon. The continuation of this tendon is inferiorly the patellar ligament. The patella itself is the largest sesamoid bone that we have, and it's completely embedded within this structure. Moving back superiorly, here is another muscle which is quite interesting because it's not only a member of the anterior compartment, it's actually also regarded as a member of the medial compartment of the thigh. Hence, it is a transitional muscle. And to be true to its nature as a transitional muscle, not really completely sure where it belongs, this muscle also has two different innervations. It receives some innervation from the femoral nerve, so nerve of the anterior compartment of the thigh, but some innervation also comes from the obturator nerve, which would make it a nerve of the medial compartment of the thigh. Now let's have a look at some more of the arteries that we will find in this region. So coursing parallel to the femoral artery, which is here, is going to be the deep artery of the thigh, also known as arteria profunda femoris. One thing about this artery, or one way how we can identify it, is not only the fact that it actually branches off of the femoral artery just a few centimeters below the inguinal ligament here, but we can also see that the deep artery of the thigh also gives rise to this artery which is called the lateral circumflex femoral artery which is the one responsible for supplying some of the muscles in the lateral aspect of the thigh. This artery itself actually has several branches. One of them would be the descending branch coursing here on the vastus lateralis. Then it also has an ascending branch and it has a transverse branch, which now we can see this one will anastomose with the medial circumflex femoral artery. Another feature to know about the deep artery of the thigh is that this is the one that gives off several perforating arteries that actually help maintain the integrity or maintain the vascular supply also to the posterior aspect of the thigh as there is no artery of the posterior aspect of the thigh. While we're in this region, let's have a look superiorly. We can see that there's a large muscle or a large tendinous structure that is coming down here, which is called the iliopsoas tendon. The iliopsoas tendon is the fusion of the iliacus muscle and the psoas muscle. And so this joint tendon will pass deep to the inguinal ligament here. And these two muscles are also considered muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh. They should be innervated by the femoral nerve, or to be specific, by the same anterior rami, which are from L2 to L4. Moving on now to the medial compartment of the thigh. The medial compartment of the thigh will contain the muscles that will adduct the thigh, and also stabilize other muscles during flexion and extension of the thigh. 
The femoral artery is an important landmark here because this is the structure that actually provides the division line between the two other motor nerve territories, so the femoral nerve and the obturator nerve. Within this territory, we will find the pectineus muscle, which we have already found earlier, and we'll also find the adductor longus muscle, which is a large and fan-shaped muscle, which is the one that is placed most anteriorly within this medial compartment. I'll go ahead and hide this, and I'll also hide some of our quadriceps femoris group. So, now we can see that deep to the adductor longus, we had another adductor, which is called the adductor brevis muscle. A good help in identifying this muscle is to focus on the obturator artery and nerve. So if I turn on the nerves again, we should be able to see that we have a part of the obturator nerve, for instance, that goes anterior to this muscle, and we also have a part of the obturator nerve that goes posterior to this muscle. So in other terms, this muscle is sandwiched between the anterior and posterior divisions of the obturator nerve. In addition to this, here's another muscle, which is called the gracilis muscle. The gracilis muscle is actually a slender but quite long muscle. It is strap-like and it also crosses two joints, so the hip joint and the knee joint. And as I said earlier, it is one of the muscles, one of those three muscles that forms this structure around the knee, which is called the pes anserinus. Remember the mnemonic from earlier on. Let me go ahead and hide this muscle too. And now we can see another muscle, which is called the adductor magnus muscle. So the adductor magnus has two portions. It has one portion, which functions as an adductor, but it also has another portion, which is a little deeper here, which functions more like a hamstring muscle. Due to this dual function of the adductor magnus muscle, we also have a dual nerve supply. Let me go ahead and hide these hamstrings here. Here we go. Now we can see all of the adductor magnus in its full glory. So, as it has these two portions, which is the hamstring portion and the adductor portion, we can now understand that part of the innervation is going to come from the obturator nerve for the adductor portion and from the sciatic nerve for the hamstring portion. There's one more small muscle in the medial compartment of the thigh, which is called the obturator externus muscle. The obturator externus is actually associated with the gluteal region as one of its actions is external rotation of the thigh. We will not be dissecting this in lab. This is why it's best to study this on an illustration. This concludes this review. Please make sure that you also consult the dissector and the lecture material for study purposes. Thank you very much for your attention.